Yo, what's up guys? My name is Glock and welcome back to the letter. We're now in part 13 guys Thanks for still watching this series even though we're already this far And I haven't really uploaded really consistently in this in this series, but hey We're back and to give you guys a recap of what happened last time Well, uh, Zach had another really scary encounter with the bitch and he practically acknowledges his ex the, the the bitch's existence but now uh ash and isabella talk to each other and now they're planning something something really cool and the best part is ash is also acknowledging well not really he hasn't really acknowledged it yet but um he acknowledges the 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 problem at hand so he's willing to help and stuff now so anyway it's uh, it's october 30 in the game a sunday so night falls and despite my best attempts sleep continues to elude me with her image still stuck in my head flashing every few moments it catches me off guard with Ma's lullaby still echoing in my ears no longer the soft tune it once wa was so zach's ptsd is now Kicking in again. Oh, it's getting a, a bit a bit stronger now. And the terrible gnawing at the pit of my stomach. Uh, it's no wonder I can't bring myself to drift off even for a little while. It is not as if there's a complete lack of things to do while waiting for sleep to come, if it ever will. And at a quarter to three in the morning, I find myself cleaning my photography equipment for no other reason than just to pass time. Though... If I'm going to be honest, it's not the, the night terrors that are keeping me wide awake tonight, but the anxiety and the hope I'll hear from Ash or Isabella soon. And for what's perhaps the, for the 42nd time, my eyes shift over to the end of the table where my phone lies still. I've not heard from them since they left. They haven't promised a call, of course, but a small part of me wishes they would have the common sense at the very least. Waiting is a tough game, and with the concerns stretching out the minutes far longer than usual, it's impossible for more unpleasant thoughts not to enter my mind. Moreover, it does not help that when the clock finally strikes three oceans. Oh, oh, fuck me, not again. That sucks. That is creepy as hell. Shit. Wow, ah, right at the beginning of the video, huh? Here we go, boys. My hand stills. It'll be a complete and utter lie to say my heart didn't leap straight to my throat in that brief second. My whole body has gone motionless, ears straining for any further sounds. A couple of ten seconds pass. Nothing. Of course, with how old the building I'm staying in, power fluctuations ain't anything new. Every now and then, this will de happen, leaving a few tenants in a rather bad mood. Nothing unusual anymore after a few years of living here. But this time, the sudden hush brings with it a stillness that raised the hair at the back of my neck and set my heart beating hard against my chest. Something reeks in the air, and in an instant, this place is no longer home. It's a prison. Every rational fiber in my being screams at me to leave. I force myself to swallow and keep a clear head as I lie down all my cleaning tools and begin gathering together the rest of my things scattered about on the table. The camera's body, lenses, filters, diffuser, phone, anything my hand could reach. But in the resulting panic, I... Like in the nightmares, it is the scent that reaches me first. A foul putrid smell filling my lungs with a heavy stink of death. My fingers clamp tightly to the camera, holding it closer to my body as if the tiny thing would provide enough protection to whatever is with me in the room. It won't. But it's the only comfort I have. Hello? Uh, uh, I know you're in here! What do you want? Something moves behind me. A soft scuttling over the walls followed by a squelch and painful creaking of what can only be rotten flesh and broken bones. Without hesitation, I whirl around, my fingers and camera ready, patiently waiting for another movement. Leave! Leave now! There's nothing here for you! There's a brief moment of silence after, and for a short while, I think my pleas worked. Then with no warning, 
the shuffling resumes, and along with it are the sobs of a woman. <gasps> oh shit, oh shit. Oh god, fatal frame! Are you fucking. Are you fucking serious? Uh. Oh god! This is. Oh shit! Oh shit, there you are, you bitch! Come here! <laughs> Fuck! The light flashes fleetingly one last time, allowing me a glimpse of her grotesque, mishapen features before it is once again lost in the darkness. All of a sudden, her tune changes, no longer a soft cry, but a high peach shriek brimming with pain, grief, and anger. Every ounce of courage I've mustered flees from my body at the sound, and the next thing I know, my hand is gripping the knob, and I'm wrenching the door open. Her wails follow me as I flee into the night. <sighs> Pacing has always been more of Ashton's thing than mine. When I want to think, I sit and let the minutes tick by until an idea comes on my mind or my pulse settles down. And yet, dried leaves and twigs crack under my shoes as I make another pass at them. Terror is too mild to describe what this is. There's no way I'm hell in hell I'm going back. Whatever she is, pleading won't work. The moment we saw that letter, she's been after us. But I can't run. Not this time. Nearly two hours have gone by since I left the comfort of my room for the solitude of the park. Two excruciating hours since I've started making calls. No one's answering. Not even Rebecca has always kept her phone line open in case other people need her. Or Isabella who frequently checks hers for any messages and readily responds as soon as she can afford. It does not help that Ash hasn't said a word where he went off to as well. Damn it! I knew I should have asked him before I let him leave. Knowing him, he can't be anywhere. But... But there's really only one place he'd likely be at this time. The sun has already peaked over the horizon when I make it to the mansion. I have no idea what I'm expecting to see when I got here. There's Ashton, first and foremost. And a part of me wishes my assumptions are correct and he's really somewhere close by on a stakeout. But I've never been the lucky sort when it comes to that kind of guessing. And even after I've made a round of the immediate vicinity, I could find neither, hi neither hide nor hair of him. Calling him does no good either, considering how awful the signal here is. He can't be too far if he's really here, but if he is, he would have already noticed me by now. Instead, there is only silence. The kind too quiet to find any sort of comfort in. Even the trees seem to have fallen asleep with the rest of the mansion, oblivious to what's happening around it. A small island of stillness in the otherwise fast-paced world. No wonder the whole of Anstam feels at odds with the, less, with the rest of Luxmourne. While the city is alive, growing every minute, breathing every second, and pulsating with life, the village remains unmoving, unchanged. It's not surprising the legends still live up to this day, and why she's still here walking its hollowed halls. And beyond me, the mansion looms ominously. But now ain't the time for fear. Even if Ash is not here, I've still got to let the rights know what I've seen, what's in their home. And whatever grievance Ash has with them, doesn't matter. And there might be grounds for imprisonment, but they don't deserve a brutal death at the hands of one malicious spirit. And I'm sure Isabella would want the same thing. I head straight for the door without a second thought. It takes a few rings to sound loud above the foreboding stillness before I hear footsteps on the other side. God and damn it! Only a Nazi would knock at such an ungodly hour! <laughs> Fucking Luke. Typical Luke. Where's that damn butler when I need him? Before long, the door swingly widely, swings widely open with Master Luke. Right stand, sorry, Mr. Luke right standing behind it with an ominous aura behind him. Holy shit, what happened to Luke and Hannah? What happened to them? Is Hannah still good? Is she okay? Dude, that is not a good looking, you know, black aura coming out of Mr. Right. Seething will be a complete understatement to describe him. Like this, I've got no doubt why Ash would find him a suspect. You again! It's bloody six in the morning! What the hell is it now? Well, uh... Um... Listen, sir, I know this is not a good time. Oh, it's not a good time. Did you even check the clock before coming here? I bet you didn't. Unlike you, the ones living in this house need to sleep. Come back when people are actually awake. 
or I'll call security on you. Well, you are awake right now, huh? Before I can get the word in, he slams the door to my face and bolts in shut with much finality. Wait, sir, you, you gotta hear me out! You're both in danger if you stay in there! Have you seen the news lately? Everything's not a coincidence! Only silence answers me. Maybe if it was Miss Wright... Oh, who am I kidding? There are limits to how far a person will believe in you. Then again, I didn't believe Isabella when she warned us. And now I'm here, desperately trying to save people, if in, even if I'm aware it's completely out of my own capacity to do so. Is this what they call karma? If so, this is one horrible way of turning things around. Taking people's lives, playing with people's fears, making them feel useless? You're around, ain't you? You here? Inside this house? Listening, watching, or whatever it is that you spirits do? Damn, Zack. What do you want? You're already dead! Leave us! Nothing. I don't even know who I'm talking to or if a sane person is supposed to be doing that. The only thing I got after is a feeling of foolishness washing over me. Or perhaps this is just me losing my mind. Out of other options and any other ideas, I let my hands slide off the door surface and fall listlessly to my sides. I can go back to Luxburn and try to find the others. Try to get out of this mess with them. Or let them know how much in deep shit we all are. Both sounds good. Either way, my loitering here ain't helping at all. I'll let the quietness call me for a few, mo few more minutes before standing up and heading out to fetch my bike. It's quite a distance to Luxbourne, but if I hurry, I'll reach it in maybe... Hmm? The rustling stops as soon as I turn around and strain my ears for any other movement around me. Y yo, Ash, you there? No answer. If he is here and I've just missed him earlier, Already my feet is moving in search of him for the second time. It won't hurt to double check. Triple check even. With how big the property is, he can be anywhere. If things ain't so urgent, if they ain't so dire, that lives are at stake, I'd probably have just waited for him to show up again. But damn it! He needs to realize what exactly it is he's dealing with. That it is not just a petty criminal he can simply throw in jail. That it is something beyond the authority his police badge could ever give him. The guy needs to stop playing the big damn hero. Sit down and chill. My breathing comes in short, shallow raps by the time I make it back to where I started. Still no sign of him and I'm beginning to think I'm just wasting my time here. But that is when I hear it. I'd recognize the melody in a heartbeat. Ma's favorite song. I listened for a while, trying to gauge where exactly from the house it's coming from. My feet starts moving before I can stop them. And there, as I circle a corner, from a room in the first floor, a single window is open, but I can't make out whoever is inside. However, I'm sure the thinging comes from there. Still, while I'll... Still, while I'll hear an old tune here of all places, I, I won't know. It's not an obscure song by all means, but it is pretty rare for to find someone who knows this. And for some reason, Death seems to follow this song around. Oh shit! Panic lodges itself at the base of my throat at once. Whoever's humming might be a- I don't want to be the pessimist now, but on the off chance that is Miss Wright. Oh god, Zack, no, do not follow that. It's a trap, man. Shit. The shit is right. I shouldn't just barge in there. I can put myself in danger before I can save anyone. Ash will tell me to do so in the exact same words. Might even write me a dissertation why that is a bad idea if he ain't so lazy. But damn it, damn it, damn it, god damn it. Someone could be in danger. Oh shit, I don't know what to do here, boys. Oh god, if I enter and open the window, I might see something. If I keep looking for Ash, you know, like... Uh, oh my god, I don't know. I don't know, boys. Ah oh god, if I keep looking for Ash, I might survive it. If I open, enter and open the window, I might die. Fuck, I don't know, fuck! But that is obviously a trap right there, because I can hear the stupid wails and stuff of the crying woman. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> you know what? <laughs> I don't want Zack to die. 
I'll, I'm gonna keep looking for Ash for now. Shit. Shit! In the end, the rational part of my brain wins out. The half that has spent too much time around Ash. It's right, though. The reasonable part. If I do force my way in and find something unpleasant, how am I going to fight back with my camera? No matter where you look at it, that's simply asking for a painful death. I have a better chance if I find Ash. What is he stooping about? Perhaps I should try the forest, make a round farther into the gardens? Not a sound plan, but it's better than nothing. The woman's soft subs have subsided now by some means. Almost inaudible to the point where I'm wondering if I truly heard what I heard. I didn't get to dwell much on it because right in the moment, my phone rings. The sharp notes cutting piercing through the sick quietude. I clamp ha a hand over it, pressing the button before the speakers are close to my ear. Oh, shit. Oh, God, why are you in my phone? Fuck this stupid bitch. I only caught the tail of the end person's greeting on the other side, but I know the voice well enough. What was that, Ash? Could you repeat that? Signal shitty here. I asked, where are you? Hell, Zach, I've been calling your number for a good 20 minutes now. Oh, really? What kind of shithole did you get into? Good morning to you, too. I should be asking you that question. I've been looking all over the mansion for you. I thought you'd be... What mansion? Do I really need to answer that? What mansion? Why are you even... No. No, wait. Just get your ass here at Isabella's place and hurry. I shift my gaze into the mansion, specifically at the window I heard the cries from. There's nothing of it now, not even echoes. How urgent is this? Pressing enough for you to stop asking questions and get yourself here. Oh shit. Please, Zach. That gives me a pause. It's a rare thing for him to take on that tone. I'll be there in a few. An hour or two tops. Thanks. I'll see ya. I rush back to my bike as soon as the call ends. Without another look, I leave the mansion along with its haunting melodies and grim echoes behind. There are more important things than my own curiosity and impulses. Hmm. Hmm. Maria. Oh, wow! Hey! Wow! We survived! Fuck yes! Zack is alive! God. What would have happened if we actually opened the freaking window? Oh god, I'm actually curious, but I'm gonna do that on my own, guys. But I'm gonna stick to this choice, okay? We made the rational choice. Shit. So we're now in Mary Ann's? Huh. Our best grill, supposedly. And this... Oh shit, for, for, for a moment they thought it was RWBY or Ruby. And a Weiss and Ruby uh, over here. Anyway, look some shit. Is she actually a weeb in a way? I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, Marianne McCulloch's chapter now begins, boys. Here we go. 715. The numbers are so little on the top of my screen, and they glare at me with such intensity that I can just hear their accusations. I'm late for a night out with the girls, yes, but I have perfectly good excuse. A perfectly good excuse. Jeez. Considering I didn't follow typical office hours, they really don't expect me to be able to just go as I please at 5.30 on the dot. The client is, first and foremost, my priority. I have to sit tight when my personal assistant, Chris, tells me we have a big one coming up and that I shouldn't miss this one. He knows a lot more on the who's who and what's what when it comes to these socialities and I trust the judgement call. I really don't have time for rich people, their drama and their politics. These sorts who were born with silver spoons in their mouth and who were used to wagging their silver tongues about. I let him handle the negotiating with them for the most part. Why else would I have hired him? But he told me I'd receive a message about it an hour ago. Now, if only he has the full shilling when it comes to the time. Come on, I have a social life too, you know, to an extent. Well, sort of. Uh, well, pressing my head against the table, I tried to save save off an oncoming headache when the notification for a new email pops up. All I'm expecting is, uh, hey, this looks like a good project I found. Go send them a design or something like that. Really, that's how it often goes. Even with these rich, jammy clients who've heard of me from their equally rich, jammy friends, I can't expect them to hire me right off the bat, which is all well and good and reasonable. We figured out that what they want and send them my portfolio, my drafts for their projects, my rates, and hope for the best. Hey, this is a big client, Marianne. I'll babysit Brerithil for you. There you go. Just please take this one project. I promise this person is huge in Luxborn. Okay, cool. She's using Google Mail. 
Just please take this one project. All right, right, right. Mr. Parker, this is a formal request to secure the services of Marianne McCulloch. Here and after, here and after, call the designer. As authorized by Hannah Wright, here and after, call the client for interior design work out. Uh, yeah, work at Ermengarde Mansion, Luxbourne LX18, or United Kingdom. The client hopes to have the designer there on 21st October, Friday, with the time pending. But as I open the mail and see that I've been requested by the client specifically, well, I certainly didn't expect that, and it's pretty straightforward too. Anyone else would probably be excited. They will be working with the ha- with the, sorry, with the Hannah Wright. She's just one of the rich socialities that everybody loves to talk about, no matter how hard I try to tune such nonsense out. It would have been enough for me to reapply, to reply an affirmative to Chris and leave, but he has never pleaded me for me to take a project before. Would have worked, sorry, we've worked with big personalities in the past, celebrities, bankers, and even a few politicians. My PA had been indifferent about those. So the question bounced about my skull before I spy one of the email attachments. A newspaper clipping from the Luxbourne Daily's business news section boasting the headline, Wright Enterprise donates 2.5 2 million to refuge. God, my reading sucks right now. I don't know why. <laughs> Alright, so here we go. The grand opening of a new Wright Hotel last Wednesday. Our local billionaire couple, Luke and Hannah Wright, announced a donation of 2.5 million pounds to help Luxbourne refugees help keep their service open. Okay, unexpected, but certainly welcome. This follows only a month after the couple's previous donation of the same amount to save the children in the UK. One of the largest donations, this amount will help keep the safe house in Luxburn open for several years. With this money, Refuge can keep helping women, children, and victims of domestic violence. There are rumors as well of the charity taking with the couple, talking with the couple and looking to building a local center equivalent to their Gaia and Athena locations. These rumors have come to us due to one of the enterprises employees mentioning a project EOS. Wow. So they are philanthropists in a way. Okay. It certainly caused quite a stir back then. Apparently, they had invited businessmen and socialities everywhere in the guise of it being some big business announcement. Two and a half mil and an expensive looking party to boot. These people sure know how to throw their money around. Mm-hmm. Not that I should be so callous, and they're going to do a lot of good and help a community of people with all those pounds. I, of all people, shouldn't criticize such acts whether they were for show or not. At the very least, I know they'll be able to pay my rates. With the headline out of the way, however, I find myself staring at the picture that came along with the clipping. Because, wow, here I am expecting a sour old woman in a blazer and skirt. But the woman that was plastered on the front page looked like she belonged on the front page of the entertainment section or even, and if I am to be crass, as the pinup for a glamour. Okay, I'll be real here. A men's magazine. She sure knows how to rock that dress. Hmm. Hmm. Wait. Her hair. Her eyes. Her lips. Hmm. <clears throat> she can't be her. And at the same time, she is her only several several years older she looks just like no come on mac the world is full of pretty blondes it's just a coincidence you know well she actually knows her from way before way back before hmm. with a shake of my head i snap out of it and reach out for my phone when it buzzes nearly falling off my chair in the process who else will be on the other line but the very people waiting for me oh piss i'm so sorry calm i'm on my way that's what I say. Yet I still don't move from my chair, face flushed and heart racing. I could only stare until I can will myself to reply that, yes, I am accepting this assignment. And it takes even more time for me to just close the image, shut down the computer, and leave. Even then, it has already burned its image into my head, no matter how much I wish it will just disappear. It makes me eager for the alcohol and the company. It makes me eager for anything that can help me forget. It's good. I think it's a good thing that the nearest pub is just a hop, skip, and a jump from here. The Galway Shaw, as it is called by those who frequented the place, is the only decent Irish pub in this country. You can pretty much tell that someone is new if they call it by its official name, the Cold Bar. Me home away from home ever since I've moved to Luxburg. <laughs> what am I saying? <laughs> I'm actually trying to practice my Irish accent as well. 
Well, that is when I'm not cooped up in my condo and working anyway. It has good alcohol, good company, and thank God and Saint Cecilia, good music. Crowd favorites like the Body Noise, the High Wesleyan Men, and Second Fusion Orchestra are often played. Not to mention the singing. I love the singing. Anyone could just break out into a drinking song, and the others in the pub were just wonderful that they'd start singing along. And doing so while intoxicated is the best way to go about it. Hey, it's a win-win, as long as I don't puke in the middle of the chorus, and as long as I can get home in one piece at the end of the day. And tonight is karaoke night. What a better time than try to sing in all my sing all my words away. That's why I, what's that? Well, that's what my intoxicated brain tells me. The ghost of guilt and sorrow remembers who I am, and in the prison of my heart, I was my only slave. Wow. Wow, I never thought Marianne McCulloch was a singer. Wow, <laughs> look at her go. Hey! But drinking only reminds me of my home, and the thought of home makes me think of her. But in the depths of my cold soul, I'll leave the burden and despair. Is Marianne a lesbian? Not that it's a problem, I'm just... I'm just curious. It makes me nauseous. It sickens me that the smallest reminder of her can cause me such grief. Or maybe not a lesbian. Maybe she's just remembering someone closer, a very close friend. You know, let's not jump into conclusions. I'll fight for what's worth fighting for. Forget the fear, forget the rest. Mmm, nice. Of course, that might just be the booze. Any other day, I would have scolded myself for drinking so much. I lied to the Lord. I lied to myself. I lied to you and everyone I care. Until there were no more lies to tell. Is she singing the opening anime song of of, <laughs> of this game? I'm not sure. But I already have a client and we'll be having our first little meet and greet in a few days. Cowardice is easier than me. Brave, but at last I found the strength I lost to sing my love letter to you. Cause people can lie, but my lone heart beats true. I want to at least enjoy the night, get over the hangover tomorrow, and return to being a prim and proper professional after. That song was for Cam, our lucky bride to be! So give her a hand, Galway shawl! <laughs> Considering the state I'm in, one can excuse my smug grin as cheers and applause rise among the pub's patrons. Because possibly off-key public singing aside, I feel like I'm on top of the world right now, and that's a good reason as any to belt out in front of these strangers. With good drinks and good friends, there's nowhere else I'd rather be tonight. And I forget for a short while. And that song was brought to you by Marianne McCull, everyone! A round of applause! That was so good! You rock, Marianne. Oh, please stop! You're just saying that! <laughs> Drunk Marianne. <laughs> you know neither of us can hold a tune, Marianne. A toast to our shameless drunk singer. May your drinks forever flow and your notes be ever lovely. If anyone deserves a toast tonight, that's Cam. Finally sealed the deal after three years, eh? Read them and weep, bitches. <laughs> Read them and weep, bitches. Kamala's diamond engagement ring gleams as she shoots. I uh, saw as she holds it up for all the world to see. So this is Cam. Hey, she has reasons to be proud. Three years of living together, and her boyfriend finally asked her the big question. Obviously, she said yes. Don't get too attached to that ring or the one after, sweetie. I was wearing a wedding ring not so long ago, and look at where I am. <laughs> you know, is, this a, is this girl the voice actor of Isabella? I mean, sorry. I, I mean, it's the... You know what? Forget about it. Okay. But enough of me being a downer. Cheers to a happy engagement! So she's a Japanese because her name is Haruna. Of course, if something like Haruna's divorce were to happen, it'd be, I'd be there for Cam. Just as Cam had been there for me, acting more than just my yoga instructor. Oh, she does yoga. Oh, yeah, she does yoga. I can't be happier for my friend right now. Cheers! Cheers! 
Well, we both will be there for Cam, won't we? Haruna and I. Haruna, it's still... Oh. It's been a real bad year for her ever since her divorce. She's such a nice person, even loaning me money to open a studio. And she didn't deserve what her husband just, you know, had pulled. I'm happy she's smiling again and picking out like she used to. I think we've all missed our Japanese firecracker. So yeah, I was right, she was Japanese. She is, sorry, she is. We met in yoga class, something I had joined to keep myself in shape and, well, honestly, so that I could make friends when I had moved to Luxburn. Clearly, it worked like a charm, and it definitely didn't have anything to do with the fact that I brought along my lucky d20 die with me on the first day. No, sir. I love these girls so much. What about you, Marianne? You're 30 years old, and you still haven't got yourself a man. She's 30? Mm. And you guys know I have a very busy schedule. I don't have time for that. Mm -hmm. Oh, come on. That's a lame excuse, and you know it. You need a man who'll take care of you, and you need it now. Maybe some hunk will be your house hubby while you rake in the dough. I'm quite capable of taking care of myself. Who needs a Mr. Right? Uh -huh. Hey, look at me. I'm Marion McCullough, a lawful neutral cleric with nine points in wisdom and eight in charisma, but I can't get myself a date. What? <laughs> Is she a gamer? I mean, I mentioned druids and demons once. Once they don't even know the rules or understand what the numbers mean. And I certainly am not some sort of holy person. I'm a far cry from a miracle worker, and I barely have the willpower to fight off demons, especially my own. Actually, maybe she isn't looking for a Mr. Right, but a Mrs. Right. Oh! Our theory of her being a lesbian! Mm. Oh, my Marianne, we still love you even if you're in the closet. Um. That would explain some things. Mm. How do you know you don't have a ring anymore? Maybe you two can be together and I don't have to worry about my best girls being alone. <laughs> what are you on about? Th there's uh, nothing to explain. Uh, 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 that, that, that's nothing to explain. But the more I deny, the louder they tease until the other people in the pub start to watch. It doesn't help at all when Haruna drapes her arms over my shoulders and leans in. Will I be all yours then? Will you be making me feel like a woman? I know that they're just kidding around, but this doesn't make me comfortable in the slightest. So when Kamala noticed my silence and Haruna sees the expression on my face, they sob. And when the awkward air settles over us, the rest of the pub goes back to whatever they were doing before the whole thing ever started. Happened, sorry. They probably won't even remember it when they wake up with massive hangovers anyway. Sorry. Me too. Hey, no hard feelings, right? I raised my glass. They smile. We drink. There's no need to say more. We're all definitely far too drunk tonight. Eventually, the fun times end. It's a weekday after all. And with Haruna being a nurse, she still has to get ready for her next shift. Cam also has a loving fiancé waiting for her at home and really didn't may have to make a fuss about having you know, left some buns in the oven when she took off early. Really, I, I understand. I was the one who insisted, who was determined to get pissed drunk anyway. Moving to the bar, I sit. Alone at last. Alone with a straight... The fuck are you doing here, Luke? I haven't seen him before. Obviously not a regular. And he hasn't said a word and just sits there savoring his drink. With his whiskey served neat in one hand and lighter in the other, it doesn't seem like he's noticed me yet, and maybe I should go before he look he does look my way. Because he was pretty and he was blonde, and those two things plus alcohol never did me any good. A thought too late. Judging by the way he's his flushed face and dazed look in his eyes, he's as pissed drunk as I am. But whereas I feel like killing over, he looks like he's still ready to take the catwalk by storm. Really, he has just has the air of one of those men who think they own the world. Hello there, sexy. Please, don't stand up on my account. I already like what I see. Oh, I'm so glad I'm trying to break up with this guy when I was playing, I, you know, I try, yeah, when I was in Hannah in chapter 2. Fuck you! Fancy a drink? It'll be on me. Ew. But then again, I might be pleasantly surprised if he proves me wrong. Want some between the sheets? Sex on the beach? I'm talking cocktails, of course. Yes, cocktails. Yep. 
fat chance. Pag may alak, may bala. Filipino people will know what I mean. <laughs> but it doesn't matter. We both know how to play this game. And there are two different ways for the night to end. One thing or another is going to, ha ha to happen. What? The question is, what do I want to do? Are you serious, Marianne? Are you gonna... Would you want to sleep with the fucking... No, do not go out with this guy. You do not go out with this guy. Oh god, what if she does? Oh shit. Oh no, that's fine. I'd rather order some blue balls or some AMF if you don't mind. What's AMF? <laughs> I don't know. He looks like he's about to say something witty as a retort, but stops himself and drowns the rest of his whiskey. I order a mint julep, he gets another whiskey, and we start the customary small talk. Of course, the saying, ask me no questions and I'll tell you no lies, goes without saying. We ask nothing about each other, offering up falsehoods to establish a stainless fake connection between two strangers at the pub, if only to pass the time. Whiskey, as I have come to call him, <laughs> is supposedly 21 years old, single, takes care of his sick mother, and is a manager of some sorts. What the fuck? Really? Is that how the game goes? Alright. Manager of what? I didn't care to listen to the details. Meanwhile, Mint, as he come has with as he has come to call me, is 29 and I'm what did I say I was again? Oh yes, I told him that I was a professional chocolate taster because fuck it. If I'm going to lie about what my job is, my guess might as well make it fun. It's a pretty decent chat between two pretty drunk strangers, <laughs> I can imagine. And maybe it's just me, but we might as fucking well expend, it, expend the tiniest amount of effort in pretending there's something meaningful in this meeting. Would have been nice too if it was just left at that. But during a lull in the conversation, he brings it up. You know, I've never been with a woman taller than me. Eh? Eh? And to think he might have been different from the rest. Never have and never will, whiskey. Ha <laughs> ha! Take that, you little shit. Can we go back to the history of chocolates? <laughs> Did you know that chocolate candy was introduced in 19th century England as a healthier alternative to alcohol? Oh, ho. Saint Lucy was the most beautiful woman of her time. She had men come from the four corners of, of, of the world just to see the pure light of her exquisite green eyes. If she were so lucky, anyway. <sighs> no, enough of the history lesson. Come on, Mint. You know and I know what you came here for. You disgusting little piece of... Uh, though not every suitor was gallant and she was no fool, she had known that sooner or later she wouldn't be able to defend her chastity. Come on. There must be something that gets you going. Ew! Ugh! Ah! So she had taken out a knife? and gouge out her own eyes. Hmm, there is something, but I don't think you can handle it. Mm -hmm. Impressed with her devotion, God restored her eyes and made them more beautiful than before. He has a peculiar sense of humor, hasn't he? Because that only me meant suitors kept going after Lucy, and she kept her eyes in a chalice to scare them away. Oh, I'm pretty sure I can handle whatever it is. Uh, uh, Saint Lucy, please help me. Help me turn away from sin. Help me with my own blindness. My place isn't too far from here. I won't take care of you if it ends up being too much for you. What? No! No, Marianne, why? Why? No, why? Oh, God. Please, please don't end up like that. Please don't end up like that. Please don't end up in whatever I think will end up, will happen or something. Ah. And no one will be able to hear you if you try to scream. You sure you want to go down that road, pretty boy? Are you gonna kill him? Please just kill him, Marianne. Wouldn't have it any other way. Eh. 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 Eh? 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 Did they just... Did they just... Did they just... Guys, guys, I don't know what the fuck just happened, and maybe we'll find out in the next episode.
but right now I don't wanna I don't want I wanna I don't wanna know I don't wanna know right now I know you guys wanna know but you guys have to wait for the next episode to continue to confirm what the hell happened and let's pray to St. Lucy that Marianne McCulloch didn't just do what we think she just did cuz you know I'm flashing back to all those moments with you know Marianne and Mrs. Wright and stuff like that and she was strangely acting really awkward with Mrs. Wright if you guys remember and I think I now know why but fuck we're gonna we're gonna find that out in the next episode guys thank you so much for watching yeah <laughs> Shit, wow, I was not prepared for this. I was not, uh, again, let's not jump into conclusions, okay? See you guys next time. Bye!